I'd like to talk about two things I think are important to all of us, uh, and that would be imagination and creativity. Um, if everybody for one second could kind of give me a, do me a favor and look around the room. There's all kinds of things to choose from. Anything doesn't really matter. Uh, if you, whatever you find, something grabs your attention. Um, whatever it is, it was imagined and it was created. You know, even the room itself was imagined. So I, I would argue that, that we're all here today for no other reason than imagination and creativity. You know, we're in this room, we're not sitting in a cave scratching images in the dirt. You know? um, so we live in a, in a world that is changing more than ever, uh, faster and faster. And you know, globalization, technology, um, the only thing that seems to be certain about the future is that it's going to be different from the past. And I would argue that um, that is why imagination and creativity are going to be more important than ever. Um, you know, they've said that it's, it's uh, the best way to predict the future is to invent it, and imagination and creativity are really the key to, to making that happen. Um, I would like to, uh, where are we on the slides here? One more, okay. Um, I'd like to tell you guys a story about a gentleman that I met recently. His name's Dr. George Land, and he's a, he's a scientist, and he, uh, he's been studying imagination and creativity for 40 plus years. And some time ago, he was commissioned to do a study about creativity. And he, uh, creativity is kind of a hard thing to define, right? It's an intangible. But he, what he did is he created a very simple test that he could give to anybody. And he conducted this test over 10 years with thousands of people, ages 5 to adult. Um, one of the first things that he wanted to <clears throat> determine was, is creativity learned or inherited? And where does this come from? And so what he did early on in the process is he gathered up 1,600 five-year-olds from all around the country and uh, diverse backgrounds, and he gave them all this test. And um, I would like to ask you guys, what do you think of these 1,600 kids scored at the creative genius level? Anybody? Well, it, this might surprise some of you, but... 98% um, of five-year-olds scored at the creative genius level. Now, to his qu answer his question about whether it is, is it's inherited or learned, I mean, they're only five. I mean, how could they learn to be geniuses with only five years under their belt, right? And they certainly weren't all fathered by Albert Einstein. So something was going on here, right? And he, what he wanted to do, he wanted to check his data because that seemed like a bit extreme. So five years later, what he did is he gave the same test to exactly the same kids uh, to see, if, uh, see what would happen. And what happened was... At 10 years old, it went down by two-thirds. Something's going on. You know, either the test isn't working or something. I mean, these are two extremes almost. So he, he's a persistent guy. He did it again five years later to check his, check his data to see if maybe it was averaging or if it was trending. And uh, when they were 15, he gave them all the same test again. And what happened was it went down to 10%. Now, at this point, it was kind of frustrating for the guy, and his, his funding dried up for the, <laughs> for the, <laughs> for the survey. But uh, what he did was, he, he was he's a persistent guy, and he just had to keep going. So he, he went and, and gave this test to thousands more adults all around the world and to see what happens when uh, we actually become adults. And lo and behold, somehow it went down to 2%. I mean, where did everybody's creativity go? You know, their brains are still in their heads, right? I mean, I don't know where did, how it happened. Um, so to go back to his original question, is creativity learned or unlearned? He came to the conclusion that it's neither, and that actually it was unlearned. And somehow, as we grow up, we, what we were given when we were born seems to go away. And in my office, we call this adultification. <laughs> <laughs> the process of becoming adultified. We all grow up. So all you students out there, beware of this. Um, now, the definition that we've given adultification is the process of benumbing or paralyzing one's ability to imagine, to create, and to invent. 